So now let's derive some equations which are actually all known to you maybe from a special relativity. Very simply actually the proper time that is uh, known in, in, in relativity is actually equal to the modulus of the uh, uh, complex time because the complex time is, is, is split complex, it's, it's actually hyperbolic. Therefore, because of this minus, if you take the modulus, you, will, you can just derive from this, you divide by the, divide here by this ti, and therefore, instead of, here, instead of x over z square, okay, you will get uh, x square over ti square, which will, which will be the velocity square over z square minus one. So in the end, you will get uh, the proper time, but you will get it minus for the same reason that we said, because for our for us uh, uh, the time looks real and uh, the space is imaginary. Why the space looks imaginary for us? Now imagine that you want to think of any segment of space. You need at least three moments of time to imagine any small segment of space. Suppose you have a, a, a line of A, B, you have to think of A, you have to think of B, and you have to think about any relation between them, for example, how long, how close, etc. Therefore, you, you need at least three moments of time to imagine any uh, portion of space or any segment of, of space. Of course, normally you need even higher, uh, more, more, many moments of time. For example, if you, if you want to imagine an area of space or a sphere or any uh, shape, you need uh, some time. So this means that uh, our time is actually imaginary and, uh, uh, and the space is real. So that's why here uh, this minus is, uh, is there. But uh, it's a reflection of reality. In, re in reality, uh, uh, the, the space is real and the time is imaginary. But because we are going through time by ourselves, we feel that it is real. Okay, now Actually, this negative here is very important because we will see later that, it, that uh, this will be inherited by the velocity, the momentum, and even the energy. And therefore, this will allow us to derive the equivalence between uh, inertial mass and gravitational mass. And also, it will allow energy to become multidimensional because, as I said, uh, in our normal physics now, we think of energy as a scalar only because we have one direction of time and we think it's real. However, if you take the uh, different uh, possibilities of time, of the flow of time, six inner levels and one outer level, at least inner and outer, so we have uh, real and imaginary, and therefore we have real uh, momentum and imaginary momentum, real velocity and imaginary velocity, real energy and imaginary energy, and therefore this can be positive and negative and even multidimensional because the real have more than one level of, uh, of time, six levels of inner time. Now let's move to the main part, which is uh, uh, how to derive the Lorentz factor and then after that how to derive uh, the mass energy equivalence. So Lorentz factor actually is, is straightforward because uh, just by uh, uh, looking at the hyperbolic uh, relation or the split complex uh, uh, relation between the inner and outer. So if you have, if you are uh, uh, creating space in, at the speed of C and moving in the imaginary time at the speed, at any speed V, therefore the total, the actual uh, velocity will be a combination between these two that are uh, perpendicular in each other but not normal orthogonal, it's hyperbolic orthogonal. Therefore, the actual velocity will be the square root of c square minus v square, and therefore the uh, uh, known uh, uh, gamma, which is a uh, uh, Lorentz factor, is uh, cosine uh, this angle here, which is equal to uh, one, actually uh, uh, tan, tan this angle is v over c, so uh, cosine will be one over one or uh, one minus beta square, which is the same Lorentz factor that is already known to you. Okay.